All right, so yeah. welcome to uh, this special conversation we're having with a gentleman from Zagreb. And this gentleman's name is Kreshimir Marusic, who spent the best part of his football career in Australia before um, heading over to Belgium and then returning to Australia and then uh, returning to his native homeland of Croatia, where he's now a coach and a, play, a, a coach that prepares players for uh, top level professional football. And uh, he's kindly going to have a conversation with us about youth football and his experiences in developing footballers. So Kresho, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Jessica. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. So um, we just wanted to start with your youth career and what was it like for you growing up as a youth footballer and what were some of the key stages that you had to go through um, as a developing young player in Croatia? Obviously, that was a different time. I mean, that was uh, almost 30 years ago, you know, when I started. Uh, well, actually, even 40, 40 now, you know, I'm 52 now. I started with, when I was 10 years of age, you know, at that stage, uh, the, the kids were just starting between uh, the age of 10 and 12 to be involved in a football, you know, to be, to can go to the clubs. And uh, at these days, you can see, you know, that the, it starts from more, more, maybe five years of age, you know, it's really, really earlier. So that's, that's the, probably the, the biggest change what has happened, you know. Uh, the thing is, um, I started at Dinamo Zagreb, you know, as a selected player, you know, they, they, they took me from 500 kids, you know, they took five, four or five of us and we start to be in a selective process of Dinamo. You know, at that time, you know, in, there was um, one of the best clubs in UX Yugoslavia, you know, I mean, obviously in, always in Croatia. But um, it was a heaps of heaps of players. I mean, um, uh, we, we need to go through the, all these levels and stages to the youth development uh, in a selective process. So you always have um, every maybe six months the players will come in, in, you know, so you always have to fight to your own position. You always have to stay to be at Dynamo, you know. I was lucky enough to, to stay all my youth development, you know, so I was from 11 years of age till 17 when I decided to go and play senior football, you know? even though I could, I could stay at Dynamo and play junior level. But I, I just said to, it's not really good for me. I would like to go now and uh, try to play senior football because that's a future for me. Yeah? So even now, when I have a players who they are talented or I can see they can grow in through the, through the football, I always uh, trying to put them to the senior level as earlier as they can, okay? Because that's a process when they need to go through. So to me, it's always to get that through the, this process much earlier than um, just staying in juniors level till the 19s, or maybe then they, they, they move to the senior level. It's better for all of them who they have a talent, who they have a physique, who they have a mentality as well, that they can go to, to a bit earlier. Yeah, and it makes sense. And and I guess with you and your experiences as, as a young player, when you step into senior football, it's very different to junior football. What were some of the challenges that you had when you moved uh, into senior football as a 17-year-old? Well, the biggest challenge is because at that time, there was a there was a squad of 25 players, and said between 20 to 25, and the most of them, they were just experienced players. We didn't have any young players, you know? I mean, uh, now you have a regulation because in some leagues and uh, like second, third division, they need to play three youngsters or some of the some of the, the, the countries have four or five youngsters, you know, under 21s. At my times, you could play with uh, all of them to be 35 or whatever, you know? So the biggest challenge was uh, how am I going to get into the team, okay? But um, maybe lucky for me, the coach who they just took me for to play senior football, he was the, my coach at the Dinamo Zagreb, you know, in a, in a youth development, in a school, in academy. So he knows me. He knows my ability. And he's right away, he put me into the team. And um, obviously, when you're surrounded by the experienced players, uh, you're going through this process when it's sometimes it's easier for you, sometimes it's harder. Easier in a way that you can rely during the game on your experienced players because they were just the players who they play with, with a lot of games, you know, and you just already started. So you, they can talk through the game to you. They can help you through the game, okay? 
The, the other thing is why is why is the harder? Because they are expecting straight away you'd be good. <laughs> There's no excuses. Yeah. Even you are young, it doesn't matter. They say, well, you are capable to do it and you have to do it. So as I'm saying, in one way it's good, in the other way it's you know, it can be harder for the youngster. Yeah. These days everything's changed. We have a uh, lots of youngsters and uh, a bit few of experienced players. Sometimes that's not enough, you know. So you have seven, eight young players, and then you have two or three experienced players. Well, it's hard to develop. It's hard to 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 these young players move forward straight away. It takes a time. It takes a time. In yeah. my time, it was easier to go if you have ability, if you have a talent, if you're good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Today it's 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 harder for the youngsters. Yeah, and and I guess. There's, I'm talking some... in a general. I mean, talking in a general, and in, yeah. in all these countries and depends. I'm talking now uh, from my perspective of the Croatian national league. You know, you have uh, e e everything's changed. You have now 50% of foreigners players they play in a first division in in Croatian league. I mean, 50%. So then you have 50% your own players. I mean, imagine that. And then you have of these 50%, maybe 30, 35% of the players who they have experience. And they are on a, this level for years, and then you have youngsters of ten or 20, 10 to fifteen percent of the youngsters. As there's not enough, there's not enough. I mean, to me, to be honest with you, to develop and to someone go up to the to the football and and pro be a professional player, there's not enough spaces anymore for the youngsters. Yeah, that's why they are leagues like second division, third division, good for them. You yeah. Know? So the bigger clubs can send them on loan so they can get some experience and then they bring them back yeah. if they're ready. And they can wait when they make the turns for them, you know. Yeah. And so you you now like you've been working for many years. How many years is it now that you've been working on players and developing them individually um, to prepare them well, for, for soccer, yeah, for football? I, I started in two thousand and two, even in Sydney, you know, I started to work one on one with the players on the individual base, you know, training sessions. Um and then when I moved back to Croatia in two thousand and three, um I started to do that work as well. And then in two thousand and four opened the academy who I had that in Sydney. I, actually I reopened the academy. I know it's the same academy, you know, it's the same name, everything is the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, start uh, doing two things with the academy. I had 125 to 130 kids. Uh, I had uh, five coaches and all these things, uh, the fields and, and everything what it needs to be for the academy. They're running all these setups. And in the meantime, I was still working with the individual, with the players, with the professional players, with the youngsters who want, want, they wanted to become professional, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I'm not making all of the players, I was always help the players, even even if they don't have a talent, even even if they don't have a ability to play football at that time, I will take them in one period just to help them. Okay, but uh, the best part or the best ways when you someone take the individual coach to keep have ability to have a talent, then it's the best way to help that kid to to grow into the football, instead of taking someone who doesn't have ability. And uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication and discipline and everything. And it's really, really hard for that young young boy to to compete with a talented player. You know, doesn't matter what I do with him. Doesn't matter how many sessions he had with me during the week or whatever. It's really, really hard to to to, to help these players who they don't have the abilities or talent. Yeah, is it a is it a hard conversation to have with them and their parents when you say to them, "Look, maybe no, it, it's, it's not, not for you." you no, if you're honest, yeah. and you go straight. Yeah. If if you if you're honest, and you first of all, all the coaches who are working with the kids, they have to be honest. Whatever happened, because it's better to say that straight. What can they expect of working with the that young boy? Okay, for some yeah. period of time. What can, can happen? That's it. Instead of uh, fooling around the, 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 the parents, the kid, um, you know, like uh, playing and joking with him through the sessions. Now, if you want to help him, try helping properly 
And then in the end of the day, you're going to tell him, you know, okay, we're going to work for three months, six months, year, and we'll see how you're going to develop, how you're going to grow up. If you don't grow up, if you don't, uh, if, if I don't see enough of you during the session or during that period that you became a better player, that's it. That's it. You just play, you have a fun. That's it. You don't have to work one on one. That's it. Or with two or three players, you know, because individual session, it's even less players than or around five. I work sometimes with the six because it's better. You know, you can do some exercise with it, what has happened during the game. And it's, it's always good to have sometimes a few more players. Yeah. And do you notice, obviously, it's a while back now, but when you were working with players in Australia compared to players now in Croatia, was there any major differences between the two in terms of maybe mentality or how they apply yeah, themselves? It is. Yeah, it is very different. The very difference is in mentality. Uh, in Australian boys, they are preparing to work. They, they, they love to work. They are, they are concentrating. They listen. Um, it's, to me, it's like, like that, that they're trying to dedicate themselves during the sessions, okay? Uh, Croatian mentality is like, um, yeah, but I know this exercise. I don't have to work on my right foot. I don't have to work on my left foot because it's good. You know, I, I know this, I know that. You know, I mean, they don't put themselves 100%, okay? They always try to um, make it easy through the session, yeah? And then you have to push him. And then you have to, you know, try to explain to him all the time. Come on, you have to do this, whatever. Doesn't matter if you're good on that. You just have to repeat that, repeat it, repeat it. But as I said, it's a difference. It's a different, but as you know yourself, I mean, uh, when you talk with someone in, uh, in Croatia and say, listen, in Australia, they are good players. They are, they are really, we have some really brilliant players over there. We have a good competition as well, okay? Um, we are lacking maybe some good uh, international coaches, or so we are lacking maybe to to modelize their game. You know what we want in Australian football? It's 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 like when I was over there. You know, uh, they didn't have a model. They didn't have a system where they want to go with football. You know, but you need to have a model. You need to have a system. You need to know where you want to be in five, ten years time, and you have to go try to this. To the aim to that, if you want to catch it with the Europe, you know. And, and when I say it, in Australia, they play good, they're good competition. You know, always the Croatian mentality is like Croatian, you know, coaches in whatever, you know, uh, commentators they will go, oh yeah, but that's Australia, you know, that's too far. That's like, you know, nah, it's hard for them. And, you know, like it, they don't have that much respect, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that, that the lack of knowledge, you know, the lack of interest, because I think that, that, that especially now in the last 10, 10 years, you know, the football's changing a lot. You know, if you, if you can see, you know, I mean, all around the world, everyone can play football, you know, there's, yeah. there's not any more that the, 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 the countries where you can just go on the field and you will say, you know, we'll, we'll get three or four or five goals, that's it, you know, that's not, that's not. Even now, the biggest countries like Spain, Italy, and England, uh, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, you know, they have problems with the, with the, with the team. You know? they, they have it. They have it you know, with the national team. You know? They have problems with that game, that sort of the games. Because football's changing, you know, and if you prepare to, to, um, to finance and to, to, to develop your, your, your league and, and, and develop your clubs and, you know, and, and in, in five, ten years' time, you can compete with everyone. It's not yes. like before, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know. It's a big difference now. It's a big, big difference. Yeah, the world's a lot smaller. It's the knowledge is there for everybody to yeah, share. Smaller technology, is, technology is everywhere, you know. They can, everyone can go on, 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 on the site, on, on the internet, and then see what the others doing, what's, what sort of sessions, so, you know. Everything is strived to you, you know, you just open the computer and that's it. Yeah? But obviously you need to know your, your job, but I'm just saying it's, it's easier now than before, you know. When I was young, as I said, even in Dynamo, you know, I had great coaches. I mean, great football players who they were coaches, okay? Yeah. Because these days, you don't have to be a great player to be a coach at Dynamo or some other clubs, okay? Because 
you know, you have a license and you go through the license and you can you can start to be a coach somewhere, you know, if someone's going to employ you, you know? Yeah. Before, it was not like that. Before, you just need to be ex player or, you know, there's not many coaches that were not involved in football or they didn't play on the biggest level. And I had, a, in my youth, I had maybe six, seven, eight coaches, maybe even 10 coaches who they, I went through the, the academy, the Dynamo academies. But just only one was telling me what I should do on the field, what I should do to become a better player. The rest of them didn't say a word for me. You're good enough, you play. How are you going to resolve the problems on the field? It's up to you. No one told me, move forward, move backwards. You go left, you go right. Now you pressurize, now you drop back. Um, now you take the ball, now you pass the ball. Yeah. Now? We are just like computers now, you know? We're just going through the kids and you just go, just now try to do this, try to do that. You know, we, 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 we talk a lot during the sessions. We're trying to explain the kids everything, you know? We, yeah. In my times, no one's telling me anything. Yeah. <laughs> they were thinking, you're talented, you, you're good enough, you play. If you're not good enough, we'll drop you off, we'll put someone else. That's it. That's life. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but then I think for you, you were a very creative player. So maybe if a coach was telling you what to do all the time, where to do it, maybe you would have lost some of your creativity as well as a player. When you that's right. You're yeah. absolutely right. But maybe sometimes I will just um, realize that uh, that some of my, my, my... When I was a lot on the balls, maybe I... Was, I realized maybe the, 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 the game will, who I played will be much faster if I pass the ball earlier, if I, you know, make decision earlier, if I move forward earlier, you know? Um, as I said, maybe I'm just saying, you know, you never know. My, yeah. my career is fast, you know, so we, we can say what. But I'm just, uh, if I compare um, this work today uh, as, uh, as us coaches and uh, my coaches over there before, you know, I mean, even even in the first division, you know, in, in, in Croatia and in, uh, in Belgium, in Australia, in, you know, uh, there's sometimes there was not enough information or not information at all. Okay, it suits me. It suits me fine, you know, but I was that player like that, you know, yeah. maybe to some other players didn't suit, you know. Maybe some of the players need to have a conversation, need to someone tell him what to do, when and when, okay? Yeah. So, as I said, to me, it's helped me, you know, I could play my own game. I could see the game, I can feel the game and I'll, I'll do something, okay? I'll do something. But if I compare when I came to Belgium, you know, when I came to Belgium to one of the smallest clubs, okay? In Australia, I played with, with the good clubs, with the good players, yeah? And when I came to Belgium, that was a small club. You know, the players were very professional, but we were not that good, okay? Yeah. And I play same position, you know, number 10. You know, we play 4-4-2 in Diamond. I was number 10 behind two strikers. But I, I was running for half an hour. I couldn't get the ball. <laughs> what, what's, what are I there now? What I'm doing on the field now? Nothing. It's better yeah. to me sit on the ground, you know what I mean? To, to be honest with you, huh? And then, then I change. I realize I have to change my game. I've I, I done defensive work much more, you know. I play one or two touches. And then when I came back to Australia after a year, my coach, Branko, who knows me really well, he said to me, you're a different player. I said, yeah, I am. Be because I changed. I changed my game because I, I, I couldn't play anymore like that, you know. Yeah. I couldn't get to the ball. I, I, I couldn't have a ball anymore, you know. So I need to change my game. And that's why, as I said, sometimes you realize that uh, the, the game itself, it's, it's uh, higher and bigger than any, any player. So when we start to play the game, game dictates what we're going to do. The ball and the game dictates what the, any player is going to do, you know? Yeah. And the rest of the players and this and that, you know? I mean... Obviously, you know, you always, when, when you're young, as I always said, when you're young, you see the ball. And then you see a small part of the field. When you're growing up, then you see a bit higher. Then you have your vision and your ability to see, it's getting, getting higher, okay? And, 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 and then in the end, when you start to become, become a coach, then all of a sudden you see everything. 
and you think, oh my God, what is that? That's totally different from what I was playing, to be honest yeah. with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't see the game like that, you know? So if I go and analyze my games when I played, you know, now as a coach, some of the games I would say, yeah, brilliant, well done, per perfect. But some of the games, oh my God, first, come on, man, please, you know? That yeah. was not good enough. Yeah. And I said to you, that it's a totally different when you're playing and when you're coaching. And uh, it's just amazing what, what, how, how you can see football differently every five to 10 years. Who knows, you know, I'm now 50, 51, I'm going to be 52 in a 10 years time. I don't know, I might see something else. You know, I mean, <laughs> you never know. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. We, we're now talking about the zones, you know, in my time, there were no zones. That was up and down. That was yeah. built. Yeah. Half of this field, half of the other field, you know? And you know what you're going to do on this half, and then what you're going to do on an opponent's half, yeah? Yeah. These days, there are four zones, yeah? yeah? In every zone, you know what to do. In every zone needs to be some players, and this and that. I mean, it's it, it, it's just amazing how the full football developed, you know? Like, um, when COVID started, uh, like almost season two years now. This is it almost two years? It will be almost two years. Okay. Uh, I study Barcelona Barcelona football football academy. You know, so I apply and study for year for, for one year. It's it's amazing how they approach to the football, uh, the the science and everything. It's just yeah, you won't believe it. I mean, it's just like you know. They can talk, they can, they can write about football, right? they can write about one position, 20, 30, 30 pages. Yeah. <laughs> In my time, there was like, can you do this or can you do, can you, can, or you can't, that's it, yeah? Now it's just unbelievable. I, you know, I was just really, you know, when I was learning that, it just seems like uh, science fiction, science fiction. Yeah. yeah. Big change. Yeah, big change, big change. What's formed you as a coach? So what kind of a coach are you? So you said you studied, you're studying online with this Barcelona Academy. What 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 influences you as a coach? What kind of a coach are you these days? In well, your style? the first, as I said, the first thing I'm very open. I'm honest, I'm very open, okay? When the players come to my session, obviously at first I'm gonna ask him, where he played, uh, what what uh, he was doing through the sessions, okay, the coaches who he had, uh, the clubs where, where he where, where he played and this and that, okay, what position the, the most like what he want to play and this and that, you know, what he knows in general about football, you know, what he knows about himself. I'm asking what he thinks about himself, where he's good, where he's bad, what what sort of things he wants to change during the game to become a better player, okay, or yeah so first i have a talk with the players then we go outside to have a sessions then as i go through the sessions you know through the coordination coordination with the technique um it depends of what position he's playing some sort of exercise what position he's going to play and in general it's like x-ray i'm doing the x-ray of the player yeah once i do the x-ray of the player then after sessions i have again talk with him, I tell him what we're going to do, how long, this and that, and then we'll see how we're going to progress. That's it. And we start working, okay? Obviously, it's hard with individual coaches because uh, you don't have a player every day, day by day. You have a player maybe once a week, mm, twice, maybe sometimes, okay? Then in a regular basis, um, most of the players, they start uh, continually once a week, and then they, they see the progress after two or three months and they stop coming and they stop coming. And that, you know, because they realize they are better now, that's enough for them to play better. Yeah. And all of a sudden, after, I don't know, six months or year, they come back. And I said, why would you just now come back? Yeah, it, the things start badly. I said, yeah, because you should continue to work. You, you know, the, the uh, when I analyze the, 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 uh, my work, you know, with the players, and, and I always say there's, there's not many players who they stay with me in a bad, in a good times. The most players leave me when they have a good times, you know? And uh, 
when it's bad, then just call me and they want to come back and to work on that. You know, I mean, sometimes it may be too late. But I'm just saying, it's it's amazing how the player respond on, 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 on when they when they progress, you know, and uh, when they see they are better now, you know, when they see they can things or they can play easy on the park, on the field, they understand everything better, Your, their body moves better, their, their, their quality of pass, the quality of taking the ball, it's much better now than they was before. And, and all of a sudden, they are satisfied with that. No, I mean, fair enough. For me, it's fine. I mean, as I said, to, to always to anyone, you know, it's up to you how you're going to work and how you're going to progress. It's up to you. It's not up to me. I'm here just to help you. It's up to you how you're going to respond on that. Yeah? And how you how you're going to take it. It's up to you. And it's not up to me. Yeah? I mean, it's, it's never up to the coach. Coach doesn't play, you know? It's the same things when, when, when you see the two or three or whatever clubs in the Champions League or whatever, in the European League, or and they, they talk about the coaches and, you know, they compare the coaches and, they, you know, I mean, it's, that's stupid. The coaches doesn't play. The system doesn't play. The model doesn't play. Model helps, but it doesn't play. Who's playing? Players play. I cannot make decision for the player on the park. He can, he's doing the decision, yeah? So, you know, when we compare the coaches, I mean, we can say, I mean, I love Guardiola, okay, because of his open play, because how he plays, okay? But I like the, 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 a lot of coaches, in a way. It doesn't matter if they play defensively, offensively, whatever, you know? I like them because you can take any, from any coach, you can see what, how he's approaching to the football, okay? But in the end of the day, they are not playing. The players play. Yeah, and it's always gonna be the successful coaches will be with success because of the successful players on the park, nothing else. Yeah, yeah? that's about it. You know, I mean, uh, whatever we can say. You know, I mean, uh, his tactical approach was better than the other coach. Uh, it's not true. What if this they scored two or three chances what they had? Well, what we say about this tactical approach then, you know? Yeah. I yeah. will say, oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, oh, fair enough, of course. If they score, you will say, oh, oh the other coach was better <laughs> because he had a, a tactical approach to offensively, to play yeah. offensive. I mean, you know, because the game is change, can change right away in a minute, in a second, you know, everything can change. Yeah, it's not like basketball where there's so many goals, so many points. There's that's only right. a few goals, so it's only a few goals. Yeah, that's right. And it changes everything. One goal changes everything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. All right. So well, as I said to you, so whatever I work with the players, you know, I mean, uh, I explained it to them what they need to do during the sessions, what they need to do after the session, how they're gonna um, relax, how they're gonna sleep, how they're gonna eat because it's all important. It all comes to the ones, you know? It's not only you can work, 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 what are you gonna do with your body then, you know? <laughs> the, the food is special for your body, for, to give you the energy, you know? And then yeah. you can use that energy through the sessions, you know? If someone doesn't eat properly, he cannot have energy for a full session, you know? He can have energy for 20, 30 minutes of session, you know? And then all of a sudden he's dead. What yeah. are you gonna do with the player when he's dead, when he's lack of energy? Nothing. I can do anything with him, you know? Same with the coach at the club, you know? Same when they play the game, yeah? So, it, it, as I said, I'm trying to help them in every, in, in every possible way. Uh, I, have a, I have a team of people who they work with me. I have a physio, I have a, 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 a mentality coach, you know, a psychology coach, you know? There's a there's a heap of I have a fitness coach who they work with me. I mean, the, we all included if he wants to to take this of them, you know. If I, I can always I can say, you know, you can take me, you can take another coach, another coach, and this this is it. It's like a team, yeah. And we're trying to help the player. Obviously, some some of the players will just take me. Some of them will just take maybe fitness coach and this and that, or just you know both of us. Um, so yeah, but. Uh, how can I be successful or how the individual coaches can be successful in just the one way 
to have a player and to work with a player for at least two or two, three years, not one year. I mean, the one year is just to, uh, we know each other, we know what we do, we know what we're lacking now, we know what, we, what we've done well and how you develop well, you know, and uh, what, what sort of progress we want to do with you in another year or two. And uh, then after two or three years, then it's okay. Then, then you will see the progress of the player. Then, then the player can, can develop, they grow up through the, through the football, you know, especially because uh, if someone came to me and he wants that type of the work, then I go to the games, I analyze the games of him, you know, analyzing the games of the, 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 the opponent of his team as well, as I can see how they play, where he, where he can move better and this and that. So it all comes together then, you know? As I said, but it's a lot of work, it's all the work. So you have a place like Ante Budimir, who now is playing in uh, Osasuna in uh, La Liga. He's, uh, he's playing for the national, national team of Croatia as well. He's been injured now a bit, so hopefully he's going to recover and he's going to be soon on the park. But uh, he's with me 10 years. 10 wow. years. He started, I started with him when he's 20 years of age. Now he's 30. Yeah. And we're still working, you know, even though he's in Spain. I go over there, I'm watching the game, I'm analyzing the opponent for him, I'm analyzing his game. I work with him individually when he's here. I'm going to go, I'm going over there to, to watch his session, to see what he's doing during the session, how is he during the session, so you know what we need to change. Um, uh, analyzing where he's going to go, what is the next step, or when he has uh, approached from two or three clubs, I analyze all three of clubs, three clubs, you know, from different countries and say to them, listen, maybe the best club is for you this way, you know, and you have to move over there, like we've done from Italy to Spain, you know. When I suggest that he needs to go to Mallorca instead of to going to Lecce or Salernitana in Italy, you know? And obviously, in it, everything has to gel, obviously, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a magician, to be honest. I'm not a magician, but I can just see where the player can go, what will be the best for him, yeah? So, so it all comes up, it all comes really, really good. So, you know, um, but that's type of the work I like. I like, yes. I mean, in a way, I'm, I'm gonna work with a, any kid or any player who's gonna come and say, listen, I, I, I want to work with you for 10 sessions. Fair enough, I'll do 10 sessions with him. I analyze him, I will tell him straight away, you know, what he needs to be doing, what he needs to be done. And that's it. Go to someone else. Go to take some other coach. No problem yeah. at all. Yeah. Someone else, other coach maybe will help you. You know, maybe you're gonna stay with that coach for a long period of time. You know? But this is how it is. You know, I mean, I have uh, three players from my academy who they are professional players. They play in the first division. You, you have uh, Carlo Muha who's now in Bulgaria, on loan from Poland. You have Martin Schlore, who's in Gorica, in the first division in Croatia. You have Sandro Kulenovic, who is in the first division in Croatia, from Dinamo, who got a loan on uh, Lokomotiva now. I mean, with a small academy with 100 kids, to be honest, with, so I, I didn't have a selective process. Yeah. Anyone who came, they'll play. Is it good enough or bad enough? They'll play because, you know, that that's was my approach to the academies. Whoever comes to my academy, he needs to play. He yeah. needs to play. He needs to enjoy it. The first thing is he needs to go and play and enjoy football. We'll teach him. We'll learn him. You know, whatever we, we will help him. But that's about it. If he can see that he's a talented and he can go forward, you know, and he's developing really well, then I try to well help you. Then I move you to some other clubs. Well, it's the selective process. When it's going to be harder for you. Yeah. When it's going to be better for you, you know? So I'm not going to keep him to my academy. I'm going to spend him straight away. Yeah? Just want to ask you on that. that that's, very, that's very important because I, I'll tell you from Australian experience, a lot of coaches here get very protective of the player. They want to keep him in their team to win the games in junior level. But what you've, just, right. what you've just said is completely different what it should be. That's right. Where if that's you think right. he needs to go to another level with a different coach, different, like, higher standard. In, in, the end yeah. of, in the end of the day, why we are over there? To help yeah. the player, not yeah. to help the team. We cannot develop 11 players in one yes. generation. We cannot. We can help one, two, maybe three, maybe yeah. four of them if they are good generation. But we're going to help them. 
instead of help the team, you're not going to help the team. Their coaches would have uh, relying on the two or three players in the team. They want to keep their players because they want to win the game, win the competition. They, they, they want to say, oh, I'm a good coach, you know, because my team is winning. You know, you see how many goals we score. You see how many, you know, uh, championships we're winning. You know, we won. How many tournaments we won. You know, to me, that's that's not important. So what then, you know, your lack of, of uh, develop the player properly because you gel him into the team and you, you use him to, to this team winning the game in, in part of the changing the player through the game because the players needs to be changed. None of them, it's that good to come on the park and just, we just say, well, he doesn't need to learn. He doesn't need to change. He's, he's the best. That's bullshit. Even yeah. one Messi, you need to change it, to yeah. be honest. You know, one yeah. Messi, that's, that's how it is. Huh? Yeah, it's it's very interesting because I guess that's why, and it's proven by the facts of how many young players Croatia is able to produce that become world class players. And in Australia, yeah. we don't produce, even though we've got a population that's five times the size. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Obviously, yeah, yeah, that's right. But it's a different approach. You know, to me, always the better to approach to the players, one or two of them during the game, instead of eleven of them. And none of them, they have nothing. Yeah. In the future, I'm just meaning, you know? Yeah, yeah, of Tell course. Them, obviously, I'm going to talk with, uh, with the goalkeeper and with the striker the same. You know, I'm going to approach them to the same. But if I can say some, some two or three kids can develop and they can progress, well, obviously, I'm going to spend more time with them. I'm going to push them. I cannot push the number two or number three if they're not good enough. You know, I can, I can say to them, good. Change this. Try to. I'm gonna help them through the game, through the through the through the training sessions. But that's about it. But then, if I see in a two three years time that he's changing a lot, he's progressing a lot, then it's a different. Then I start to spend more time with them, you know, just to help them. Because what I want from them, I want even just one of them to reach the professional level. To feel that, how is to feel them to be professional? You know, what it's really important to become professional. And when he starts to become professional, the one day he will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my coach was telling me, do this, do that. And he helped me a lot to just to reach that level. Yeah. Like in my academy, I, from the, the kids start from five years of age, five, six, whatever, seven, doesn't matter, eight. Okay. And with my coaches, I always, uh, prepare them and talk with them to say, to say, listen, let the kid uh, be free on the park. Let him be free. Let him play. Don't pull him back. You know, just let him play. If he wants to dribble, man, let him dribble. If he wants to take five players, man, let him to take the five players. Okay? I don't want to see the player knocking the ball from the first touch. No. Because that's the easiest way to play. I mean, I mean, the hardest way to play, to connect with the rest of the players, you know, because of the, it's hardest to play one touch of football, you know? That's, that's most technical players can do that, you know? But I'm just saying, in that early age, I'm not going to tell him to knock the ball of him straight away. No, feel the ball, run with the ball, pass the ball, move again, you know? Ask for, uh, ask for the ball again, you know? So the best way when you see five, six kids, you know, that everyone wants the ball. That's right. What have we done? They're running. They're running. When we put them on the back, when we put them on the, on the system, you know, and we say, now you're going to knock the ball to the right. Now you're going to knock it over there. Now you're going to knock back. Now you're going to this. They're not running. The ball's trying to move. They're not moving that, that many, you know? But when we say, take the ball, run the ball, ask for the ball, run for the ball. Obviously, everyone will run. Everyone wants the ball. Everyone wants to score the goal. Everyone wants, of course, why not? They're young. They need to make mistakes. Yeah? When some of the coaches say, you know, if I was that so many games, it just, it, it, nothing's changed today, to be honest with you. With that, in Croatia, yeah. uh, in some part, in some other countries as well, where I went over there and watched it and, and, um, and analyzed it, the, 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 the their academies and uh, their approaching to the football. Yeah, nothing's changed. Because coach, coaches doesn't want to uh, concede the goals. 
They don't want to make mistakes. They don't want a kids to make mistakes. Oh, that's, that's stupid. You know, yeah. I mean, what would you take as a mistake? Well, so what? Yeah. yeah. I had a goalkeeper. I had a goalkeeper. You know, like goalkeeper always fucking the long ball. It's easier when you're young. You have a one who is a taller. He's a goalkeeper. He has a strong shot. And every coach say, put the ball, just knock it up front. You just run. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. My academy, you cannot knock the ball. No, no, no. You're going to play. So some games, in a 10 minutes, I'm losing five nils. Why? Because he's making mistakes. <laughs> he could not play because they are pressurized. He cannot see the solution where team is to play. Six balls, he wants to, you know, he wants to knock the, knock the ball. I said, no. Play. Now that's how we're going to learn it. Okay, we're going to lose. So what? We're going to lose 10, five. So what? <laughs> I mean, What's the, what's the problem? I mean, you know? Yeah. The parents was upset. Everyone was upset. But I said, no, that's a learning process. If you wanted to take your kid somewhere else, fair enough for me, take it somewhere else. I know what I'm going to do with your kid in a four or five years time. I know what you're gonna, what I'm going to do. And yep. what this kid's going to be able in a two, three, four years time, what are you going to be able in my academy? This is what I aim for. I'm not aiming to win this game. I'm not aiming to now he's be, be good. He cannot be good. No. Come on, who's going to be good with seven, eight, nine, ten years of age? And, well, you know? and, and it That's shows difference, but... it, it doesn't even matter because it doesn't, a lot of kids that are very good very, very early, if they're not treated the right way, they end up That's doing right. nothing by 15 anyway. So That's right. point is you want him to peak when he's 17, not peak when he's eight. That's right. That's yeah. right. I mean, how many talented players, they stop playing in, when they are 17, 18 years of age? Yeah. <laughs> How many of them? It's a heaps, heaps of them. Why? Well, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, I don't know, that, that, that things happen during his career or the young career. There are lots of things happen, you know? So, you know, we can analyze that, but I'm, I'm just saying, in a general, there's a heaps of them who they just stop playing. That's disaster. Stop playing at all. They, they never went on the park anymore, you know? For two, three years, and then they, they go to, to play some amateur football and this and that, you know? But I'm just saying that's that's not normal. That's not normal. Yeah. We need to we are there to 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 help them to love that game, to play that game, doesn't matter what happened, doesn't matter what happened, doesn't matter if they're gonna reach that sort of the level of first division, second division, third division, because it's successful if we make the players to 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 play uh, semi-professional football, most yeah. of them. Yeah? yeah. Because, you know, they can earn some money. They're still in a sport. They, they're going to meet a lot of people. They're going to travel. They're going to become a better people. Yeah. yeah. Because to me, the sportsman, it needs to be a good people. It needs to be uh, brilliant people. They, they need to understand everyone. You know? Yeah. Because we are sportsmen. We know uh, how many times we need to work, how many dedication we need to done to to just stay in the sport, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, you can go on a day-by-day -day office work, you know? One day you want to work, the other two, three days, you, you know, you don't feel like it, you know? But you're still in the office, okay? It's, it it doesn't, doesn't go for sportsmen. Yeah. I can go on the park every day, two sessions, you know? If I'm not good two or three sessions, my coach will suddenly say, say to me, hey, do you want to play or not? If you don't yeah. want to play, no problem. Just go somewhere else or just don't play football anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying about the professional yeah. players. You know? Yeah, of That's course. A difference, you know? That's a big difference. I cannot have a day off, like day off on the park. That's what I mean. You know, day off, day off on, on the work. I'm on the work, but I have a day off. Oh, yeah? Or are you going to work or you're not? Yeah? Yeah, no, very true. And when, when you, because you travel a lot through Europe as well to watch your players and also to, obviously you take your teams to competitions for practice, experience, tournaments and things. Do you notice that it's all very similar in a lot of the better countries that produce footballers have the same style of approach that you just spoke about, about, you know, developing the dribbler, the technician when they're young, letting them dribble, letting them take people on because... If they don't have that skill when they're young, it's very hard to teach them when they're 14, 15, or maybe impossible to teach them how to dribble at 14, 15. Yeah, that's right. I mean, um, 
obviously, you know, I'm, I went to the Portugal to FC Porto. I was over there uh, as well to develop myself as a coach first. And then I went, uh, I take the seven or eight of my players to academy just to co compare them, you know. And we stayed there for seven days and um, they had a training session with the, the rest of the Portuguese boys, you know. And um, oh, in that time, I was talking with the coaches as well um, about how they do the sessions, how they develop the players, you know, how they are approaching to all of this, you know. And um, it's a bit similar, obviously, a lot in every country, okay? It's the, what we want from the player, what we want during the game, or how we want to develop the player, okay? But uh, the big clubs, they have advantage of selective players. Like, you know, FC Porto is one of the best academies in the world. They're producing their own players. Uh, like F F like Barcelona, like the Ajax and, uh, you know, some of, the play some of the clubs. But they have 5,000 players in academies, 5,000 kids, you yeah? know? So they have FC Porto to their only squad of selective players. So I'm just saying now in... in, in uh, under eight to ten, uh, under eight, they, they have uh, fourteen players in a squad. That's it, fourteen. That's it, not fifteen, not sixteen, forty. Uh, under ten as well. Then under twelve and under fourteen, they have twenty, eighteen, twenty-two. That's it. You know, like in my country, they will have in um, in Dino sometimes twenty-four, twenty-five. Sometimes they will have twenty-six of squad. You know, in, in that under 18, so then in under um, under eight or ten, sometimes we'll have 18 players, 20 players over there. There's no way. As a 14, if someone came to, to trial and became better of someone in under under 14 in their squad, they take someone out, he goes in. That's a selective process. Yeah. 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 But that player who is who is he's went out. He, he didn't drop to go somewhere else. He just go on under level level of of them, and yep. then he plays again. He he steals in 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 academy, but he's not in an A A process. He's in a yeah. B process. Yeah. Some of them they're in a C process, then in a D process. I mean, and how they play, how they develop themselves. This is how they're gonna grow up to the le that levels. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and when you have something set up like that, it's, it's amazing. It's brilliant. Then yeah. again, you have the, 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 the academy coaches in FC Porto. Um, they take the coaches. If you want to be a coach of uh, under 15 in the FC Porto, and you can have all these licenses, whatever, you know, and you can have experience, fair enough. But you cannot you have your own sessions over there. You go into the clubs, you learn what's the model and what's the system of all football academy, and you stay with that coaches for six to months to a year to realize how they work. Then you can work with the same plan, with the same program, what they have. You cannot have your own program. Like in Croatia, even in Dinamo, even in whatever you club you're going to take it. That every different coach is forever a different generation, and they have their own uh, own approach to the football. And they, they they have so much difference of approaching to the football. You know, this one play this football system, that one playing different system. So in a year time, that player from this system he needs to adapt to the other system. You know. This player will take, you're going to play this position. The other the other coach will say, no, you're not going to play this position. You're going to play the other, different position. Yeah, this and that. But it's changed every year by year. The different approach to the, to, to, to the sessions as well. You know, how long they're going to work, on what intensity, they, how they're going to work, and this and that. You know, they never, and as I said, that's wrong. That's wrong. We are all one academy. We are one club. We need to know. How are we going to work with the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and all these ages? But we need to go straight away from this age to that age just to, uh, how do you know? I just lost my word. How are you going to uh, uh, 
uh, upload the player, you know, a, a, a graduate the player. Like, How the player is going to grow, you know? Progression, like the next progression. Progression, yeah, progression. Yeah. You got to go to the progression, you know, progression. Yeah. You cannot say, wow, oh, listen, you know, I'll... no, I don't seem like that. I will teach the kids on this way. You cannot teach the kids on that way. <laughs> That's a one club, one mentality, one model, one system. That's about it. Yeah. 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 That, that's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. You have the, the, the you, you have the clubs with the uh, uh, the A and B team, senior. It's to me it's ridiculous they are not connected to each other. B and A team, come on, yeah. They mm. play different systems. They play a different approach to the football. What? That's wrong. So if I move, if I need the the, the player from B team in a week or in a two, three weeks time, if I take him, he will not know what I'm, what I'm gonna do. He will go in the park and he will just say, that's that's new, that's wrong for me. You know, what I'm gonna do? How are you gonna perform? But if it's the same, if it's the similar, if we know from the player of the B team that he's gonna become the A team in, in, in a matter of time, he'll know straight away when he get to the A team, he can straight away connect it with the team. Yeah, it's much yeah. easier. It's much easier for the player. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's, that's why so many players from FC Barcelona, kids, you know, who they go on loan, it takes a time. Because in Barcelona, it's a different approach. They, 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 they're learning and they're coaching the kids in a different way. Yeah. And when you go to some other clubs, especially with the, some other clubs who they are not successful as Barcelona, who they are not that big as Barcelona, even if you change the country as well, you know, it's, it's a big difference, yeah? He needs the time. He needs the time to change his game, to change his approach to the game, because it's not the same. We can all say all football is the same. Yeah, it is, but it's with a different approach to the game. The game, yeah. it, it, it seems the same, but it's not the same. It's always a little changes, little little differences during the game, and during the countries, during the clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be important from your point of view to develop thinking players that can solve more problems. That's right. They can solve yeah. the problems. That's right. This is, yeah. you know, what when we set up the exercise, yeah, and all of a sudden the exercise goes and flows. Okay. We need to make something that exercise becomes harder. Yeah. To be Start thinking, you know, not when he just automatically he'll do, he'll take the ball, play, he'll take the ball. No. Try right away, he needs to do something that he needs to change. He needs to change. He needs to, you know, stabilize himself. What are you going to do now? Yeah. Not like, coach, what are you going to do now? No, <laughs> no. You resolve it, not me. You resolve it. Then I'm going to tell you, is that good or you can do better? But first, you resolve the problems on the field or during the sessions. Then they're gonna stop and they're gonna say, you could, you should. Sometimes you take this decision or that decision, yeah? This is the only way how they're gonna, we gonna do mentality, good players who they're gonna develop themselves during the game, who's gonna change themselves, uh, who's gonna make the right decision or who's gonna change the decision. That's it, yeah? yeah. If the very and it's hard as well as a coach to not say the answer when you have the answer, isn't it? That's right. It's very hard, but you have to know that it's the best way to let him solve the problems on his own. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're gonna tell him. Then you're gonna help him. Yeah. Afterwards, you're gonna of help course. him. Not before. Afterwards. Of course, because then that way the learning will stick. They'll remember it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So that's right. All right. Well, maybe to, to finish us off, what, with, with young players here in Australia that are just slowly, we're still coming out of another lockdown here, what advice would you give to young players that are looking to maybe go overseas in the future to prepare themselves the best so that if they do get an opportunity, um, that, they're, that they're ready for it? What would you suggest or some suggestions that you would make from your experience? Well, the first thing is their mentality. You know, if you are, if you are willing to work hard, if you're willing to succeed, you need to have that in your mind, yeah? So your, the, 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 the mentality of the kids, of the players, you know, they start to become a good or better on the field, you know, and uh, you can see that one day it can, it can be something of them, okay? 
their approach of themselves, they need to be, I wanted to succeed. I, I, I want to become a professional player. I, I know I can play over there, you know? And then what I'm going to do before, okay, I need to work hard. I have to prepare myself. I have to listen to the coaches. I need to uh, love my games when I play the game. I need to love that ball because if you don't love the ball, you won't succeed. Yeah, because you need to first love this ball. You, know? you need to play with that ball. You need to, uh, like, you, you became a one body. Me and the ball, that's a one body. Yeah. So I wanted this ball. I want to take this ball. I want to take the responsibility on the park. What am I going to do with that ball? You know, I'm not going to hide behind some other players. I'm not going to be in the shade when someone has the ball. I want to open up. I want to, you know, I want to help my teammates. And I want to take the responsibility and I want to change the game if I can change the game. That doesn't mean that you need to be a midfielder or striker. You can change your game if you're a stopper. You can change the game if you are a fullback, you know? So this is how you're helping your teammates, you know? This is how you're changing the game, you know, during the game, during the play. So, you know, but the most important thing is your dedication. And how are you going to, how are you going to uh, set yourself up to, to see yourself in the future? To see yourself where you want to be, where you're going to go. If you, if you want to succeed in your own country, then you stay and just try to succeed in your own country. Yeah? If you want to prepare to go somewhere else, maybe you didn't have enough opportunity in your country. Maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't suit you. You go somewhere else. Try go somewhere else. Go to Europe, go to Asia, go to whatever and play over there. Have fun. Enjoy. Because if you're not enjoying the, the sessions, if you're not enjoying the game, what then? What's important? Why are you doing that? Because of the money. Fair enough. But then again, you, will, you, you won't be able to earn it if you, you, you were not successful, you know? If you're not, uh, if you're not happy on the park, no one will take the angry player. <laughs> no one, you know? So I'm just saying, you know, I mean, this is how it is. Right? So dedication, obviously, you know, the, the aim for something, you know, to see yourself where you want to be in a two, three, five, ten years' time, yeah? Um, that, that's that's the maybe most important things. Obviously, you need to train well. You need to be healthy. You know, so it, it's a lot of things. But it, it's in the end of the day, it's your willing. How are you gonna will? What what are you gonna do? You know, how how are you prepare for? You know, do you prefer yourself to become a professional player? Once you become professional player. Are you satisfied with that? Or you want to be a better than the rest of the players in your team, in your club? Then if you want to be better than the rest of the older clubs, you know, and become one of the best players, you know, and this and that. I mean, you, you always have some aims for you, you know? It's just up to you what you're going to aim for. You know? So you can always, you know, as I said, you know, always saying to the players, you know, how do you play, you know? And, some you know, when I when I go and watch the players how they play, sometimes I say, "All right, fair enough. You were really good. You play a really good game." Yeah, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy with that." I said, "All right, next game you you need to have you need to be even better." And he goes, "How? What do you mean how? Always can be better. You can always be better. You know, someone score two goals, you can always score three. If you score three, you can always score four. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you lose two or three or five balls." Next game, don't lose any balls during the play, yeah? Sometimes you make two or three good decisions for the goal, yeah? You can make five or six. Why not? I mean, as I said, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of things, you know, you can improve, you know, lots of things you can improve all the time. Yeah? It's just up to you. What is satisfied for? What, what do you want? Where you want to go? Where you want to be? Yeah? It's not about how who, who's going to recognize you and, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to say to you, we played two, two days ago, we played some, uh, it's called Veterani Dinama, you know, we played some games in, like, in some charity games or whatever, in, like, in Koprivnica with some clubs, you know. And, uh, and we, we won 5-2, and after the game, we had some, you know, 
little little like uh, drinks and food, you know, that then you know we all we all gel together, we talk, and you know I was going, you know I was going home, and uh, the, the, the one player from their team they go to me and say, unbelievable how you can play still, you know. I mean, I'm 52 almost, you know, mm-hmm. but when I when I'm on the park. I'm, I'm, I'm 40, I'm 15 years of age, I'm 18 years of age. I'm like, obviously I cannot run anymore, you know, that much, or I can, but I, 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 wanna, I wanna take that ball. I wanna play with this ball. I wanna score, I wanna set up. I wanna, you know, I mean, I, I would love to do everything on the park, even though I cannot run anymore like that, like I was running before, yeah? But yeah. I'm still willing to do that, you know? And obviously someone see that. Yeah. Because I'm on the park, I'm different than the other players, you know. He could approach to that the rest of the players with the ex Dynamo players as well, you know. They could say, Listen, you, you're great. No, he approached to me and he said, Which is amazing how you can play still. But but it's not how you can play. I didn't play for two and a half years on the on the big field, you know, yeah. because of the corona and all of this. I didn't play. Hmm. But when I'm on the field, I want to play. Yeah. I, I want to enjoy it. I, I will run off whatever happened <laughs> yeah that's i mean it. because that's my game that i love that game yeah that's a beautiful game yeah. i grew up with that game you know i mean that's that's all my life yeah i i don't see that as a job obviously it is job i mean but i i don't see that as a job i mean this is who i am this is what i want to do you know but I'm all, all my life in football you know and all my life or playing or <laughs> or coaching and or analyzing things or you know this is what i am yeah yeah so it's very important yeah. for kids to remember that you have to love the game and then you That's can right. enjoy it for the rest of your life it doesn't matter how old you get yeah it doesn't matter yeah that doesn't matter doesn't matter how you're successful you're gonna be you yeah. know if you love that game so what you know like that guys from koprivnica you know they love that game obviously you know they play yeah. against us okay yeah <laughs> Yeah, so that's the most important things. I mean, you know, that's life, you know. Some of them, they're going to reach the highest level. Some of them, they won't. But that's life, you know. That's yeah. life. That's life. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your time with us, Kresho. And um, and we look forward to, to hearing from you again and, and maybe, um, yeah, finding out a little bit more about how your academy is going in the future. Okay, thank you. So thank, you thank you for having me and uh, say hello to all the Australians, to all Croatian Australians over there and uh, say hello to me. Um, once again, I, 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 you know, I miss Australia. I miss to be there at least for some period of time. I miss to see all of you guys and uh, to, to that place remind me on uh, what I had in, in, in the past and like a beautiful, beautiful something what I what I done over there, some things, how the people were approaching to me and um, how happy I was over there, okay? I was very happy, I was very happy and uh, obviously I, I feel I'm as Australian as well. That's normal, you know? To me, that's normal, uh, yeah? Fantastic, you're always welcome, mate. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thanks, Kresho.